my brother has been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, um, paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. He also has symptoms of psychosis um, and it's been like that for three years. So this isn't something that came out from one day to another. He's had these mental illnesses and he's, like I said, he's, he's been really strong and he's been fighting them. He has a lot of hallucinations and he hears a lot of voices and he has these times where he can't tell what's real and what's not real from what he's hearing and what he's seeing. And it's been something we've always, um, us as a family, me and my dad, have been trying to help him with. And there's times where it's easy and there's times where it's hard. And there's so, mu so much stigma around mental illness. And I feel like a lot of people aren't informed on what it is and I just feel like they're not people aren't taking into consideration that my brother is mentally ill and he would never never ever want to intentionally hurt someone a lot of it is just my brother not being able to tell what's real and what's not real so he just constantly would hear voices um, he had a lot of suicidal thoughts he would tell me that he felt like he shouldn't be here anymore because the voices would tell him that he shouldn't be here. Be, um, he shouldn't be here anymore. Um, he would tell me that they would tell him he was disgusting. So he had a lot of suicidal thoughts, and hearing that coming out of your brother, it's not pleasant to hear because you see them as like the most wonderful person in the world, and and them to feel that way is just like it hurts you. Um, um, yeah, he would hear voices. Um, there was, he was very paranoid. Um, when he was home, he, he would always put all the couches and all the tables um, to the doors. So um, the voices, I'm assuming, would, um, wouldn't come in. Not assuming, sorry. Um, the voices wouldn't come in, um, but they would s still come to him, and he would say that that wouldn't help. Um, he would also always put tape in his mouth because he assumed that by putting tape, tape in his mouth, the voices and all the, the hallucinations um, wouldn't come to him. And he would also always uh, feel like people could listen to his thoughts, and he felt that people were spying on him. He, he's just everything to do with his mental illness. A lot of it just made me feel like I was in distress because I just know that person is not my brother. And I really do feel like the mental illness did take my brother because I can tell you who, who my brother is and my brother is not on the right state of mind at the moment. What is your reaction now uh, when he's facing terrorism charges? I, it makes me really upset. I really feel like he got failed by the system and that really the state's attorneys aren't taking in consideration his mental illness because there's so many other people that have done horrible things and my brother didn't kill anyone. What he did is bad, but I know his intentions will never be to hurt anyone. And I just know that that should not be a label that should be put on him and it has already been put on him. And regardless, I feel like that's going to affect him in the future. and. I really hope that they're able to see who Javier really is. Have you, re have you been able to talk with him or see him after he was arrested? I was able to see him um, when he was in the inpatient, but we weren't able to communicate that much because he's not in the right state of mind right now. Like He does not belong there. He should be somewhere that can give him the treatment he needs uh, the medication that he needs, we don't know if he if he is receiving that because he's in a mental ward, ward, but from what I know, he does not have any medication there. They don't know what he's taking, they don't know what he needs, um, what he's diagnosed with, they, they don't know. And this is why I'm, I feel like it's just gonna make him worse being there, and it's not Mom, right. What is, uh, 